Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for your ASUS Zenfone 1 6. By the way guys, I'll be making a dedicated video for the best features where I'll be talking about all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check that out, link will be in the description. Now with that said, I want to first start off with my favorite feature on this phone, that would be the dark mode. Now this phone comes with a dedicated dark mode but ASUS likes to call it color scheme. So if you want to enable it, you need to first go to settings. I've already enabled it. So just I'm going to show you where to enable it from. Go to display settings, then select system color scheme. And you have two options. By default, it'll be in light mode. And now this is how the phone looks by default. So this is the light mode and this is the notification area. This is your phone dialer. So this is the light mode. Now, once you turn on the dark mode or change the color scheme to dark, this is how the phone looks. Now this is the notification area and this is your phone dialer. Now for some reason if the color scheme of the phone dialer doesn't change, this is what you need to do. Open the phone dialer, then go to settings, then select personalization and select color scheme. Now if you set it as dark, it will change to the dark theme and if you set it as as system, it will change depending on the color scheme. So this is something you can do. Next I'm going to show you different ways to navigate throughout your phone. For that go to settings, then select display settings. Now scroll down and select notification bar. Now we have notification bar types. First one is the buttons. That's the one we have right here. And if you want to change the layout of these buttons, we can also do it from this button layout and you can reposition it from here. Next we have navigation gestures. These are the same gestures that you can see on the Samsung phones and Vivo phones. So instead of clicking on the navigation bar, we can do a swipe up gesture to use those buttons. So if you want to go home, swipe from the bottom center and it takes you home. For recent apps, swipe on the right side and to go back, swipe on the left side. Personally, this is not my favorite feature, but you can use it. Next, we have Android Pie based gesture or new navigation bar. For that, select this option. Now, as you can see, we have just two buttons, back button and the home button. Now, if you want to go home, just click on the home button, just like on your regular navigation bar. Now, if you want to open recent apps page, you need to swipe up on the home button and these are your recent apps. And if you want to go back, once again, you can click the back button. Now with this new navigation bar, we have another gesture where we can swipe right on the home button like that to switch between applications. So this is the new two button navigation bar, but right now it's not working that well. So I would suggest you to stick with the buttons or the gestures. Now let's look at some camera tricks. So this is your default camera application and this is your shutter button. And now you can swipe the shutter button up to start a timer. Now once the timer reaches zero, your phone will take a picture. This is a pretty unique feature that's available only on this phone. Now the next most unique feature on board this phone would be this flip camera. And instead of using it as just the front and rear camera, you can actually reposition the flip camera using the volume buttons. You can press the down button to send it back. You can use the volume up button or increase button to bring it front. So that's pretty cool. Another cool thing that you can do with this flip camera is to take panorama shots without moving at all. So just take a picture in panorama mode and the camera will automatically move to give you a panoramic view. So there we go. So that's definitely pretty cool. Now let's try it in this way. Now the hard part with this is holding the phone steadily. So there we go. And it's done. Now another interesting thing to do would be to use this flip camera while recording video. So let's try to record a video. And now once you have started recording video, we get this option over here to flip the camera. I can do that to switch between the front and rear cameras pretty easily. So there we go. And that's definitely a pretty cool feature. Now going on next, this phone comes with a dedicated button for Google Assistant. Here's the button and it can perform three actions. You can do a single click action, double click action and long press action. Now to change those settings, you need to go to settings, advanced settings and select smart key. Now there are two ways you can use this button. Either go with the default options or customize it completely. So first, let's use it for Google Assistant. Once you've selected it, you can just click it once to trigger Google Assistant. You can double tap it to open your personalized Google Assistant page. So this is how, so this is how it looks like. And finally, you can do a long press to once again trigger Google Assistant. So these are the three default options. Now besides that, you can also customize this button. So these are the three actions, press once, press twice, and press and hold. So these are the different options you get and you can customize it according to your preference. And this is my choice. So when I click the button once, it takes me to the camera. And when I do a double click, it toggles the torch. And when I do a long press, it triggers Google Assistant. So there we go. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can use split screen mode on this phone. 
For that, go to the recent apps page and then click this button over here to open this application in split screen mode. You can select the secondary application from the list over here or you can go to the home screen and then select the secondary app from your home screen. Now there is a nice little shortcut where we can press and hold the recent apps button to trigger it as well. But to enable that first we need to go to settings and scroll down and select advanced. Now scroll down once again and select screenshot and select the first option and select tap and hold to activate multi window. Once you do that you can press and hold the recent apps button to open split screen mode. Now, even though split screen mode has been on Android for a very long time, there are still applications that do not support split screen mode. So to use all applications in split screen mode, this is what you can do. First go to the home screen, then go to system, then select, then select about phone, then select software information and click on bill number 7 times. Once you do that, developer options will be enabled. Now go back to system settings, then select developer options, scroll all the way to the bottom and enable force activities to be resizable. Once you do that and restart your phone, you will be able to use all applications in split screen mode. Now going on next, this phone comes with a pretty nice trick where we can separate ringtone volume and notification volume. Personally, I want the ringtone volume at the highest and notification volume at the lowest. So to do that on this phone, you need to go to settings, then select sounds and vibration. And over here, we have this toggle called sync volumes. Now, once you disable it, you get two different sliders for ringtone volume and notification volume. So this is what I would like to do. So whenever I get a call, I get a bigger louder ringtone and when I get a notification, volume is pretty low. So this is something I would definitely recommend you to do. Next, this phone has a pretty unique feature called fingerprint answering. So to enable that, go to settings, then select security and lock screen, select fingerprint, enter your password and you have this toggle over here, fingerprint answering. Now once you enable this feature, you can answer calls using your fingerprint scanner. You can also answer the calls in the normal way, but you need to first unlock the phone. So this is like a nice security feature. Now going on next, if you like to record calls automatically on your phone, this is what you can do. Open the phone dialer, then go to settings, then select calls, then select advanced. Now we have call recording. Now once you enable this particular toggle, all the calls will be recorded automatically on your phone. Now this feature is available in India but might not be available in other countries. So if it's not available in your place, try using third party applications. Now going on next, I'm going to show you how you can change your default launcher, browser and so on. For that, go to settings, then select apps and notification, and then select default apps. Now from this page, you can change your default browser, default launcher, default phone dialer and SMS application. I've installed Nova Launcher and to switch it, I can just do that. And from now on, whenever I press the home button, it takes me to Nova Launcher. So this is one launcher and this is another launcher, that's Asus Launcher. Now, if you're using the ASUS launcher, you can do a swipe down gesture to pull down the notification bar and you can do a swipe up gesture to pull up the app drawer. And there is also a nice little shortcut where you can do a swipe down gesture on the fingerprint scanner to pull down the notification bar. So to enable that, go to settings, then select advanced, now select gestures and then select fingerprint. Now, once you enable this toggle, you can do a swipe down gesture to pull down the notification bar. You can do it again to check out all the toggles and you can do a swipe up gesture to send it back. And there we go. Next, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select battery and enable this toggle. And there we go. Once you enable it, you can check out the battery percentage on the status bar. Next, if you want to take a screenshot on this phone, you just need to press the volume down and power button both at the same time and your phone will take a screenshot. Now, if you want to take a longer screenshot, this is what you need to do. Just press the buttons. And now once you get the preview, click this button over here to take a longer screenshot. I mean, you need to keep clicking this button and you'll get a longer screenshot. Once you're done, just leave it. And there we have it. This is the long screenshot. Next, on this phone, we can also record the screen. So if you want to record the screen, first go to the notification area. You have a toggle for that called screen recording. Once you click it, screen recording will start automatically. To stop it, you can click over here. Now, finally, this phone has a massive 5000 mAh battery. And as if that's not enough, this phone also comes with a lot of battery modes. So to select them, you need to go to battery settings, then select power master. Now in this page, we have battery modes. Now these are the different battery modes. Now balance will give you the best performance with the best battery life. But if you want better battery life, you can always switch to super saver. Now you can either manually switch it or use this option below to automatically switch to the super saving mode when your battery percentage reaches a certain limit. So you can tweak these settings to further improve the battery life. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. And if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel.
If you have any questions or want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub signing off. Have a nice day.